Let me yell at Milk. We no. never stopped you, the timer. You have to restart the timer because you told me to restart the run. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Go. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, this is Tron Evolution. So, uh, I guess since it wasn't heard before, we are playing on New Game Plus. This allows us to have all upgrades, and it will be used useful throughout all the fights in the run just to speed them up. Uh, there aren't any skips that rely on them, but it just makes it go fast. Uh, my character's red. It's not for anything specific. It's just uh, customizing the file, and somebody told me to use red before the run. So uh, just starting out, we're doing the tutorial of the game. There's not a whole lot to it, but it is very movement based. So I'm just going to kind of try to go as fast as possible. And there are a few things that can happen if I do go really fast, but I mean, if I, if I kind of screw up, it's not a huge deal. It doesn't screw up the entire run. So I am ahead of her right now. Uh, that's usually a good sign for how fast you're going. I, I'll i try not to. So here we're about to do a slow-mo skip. The wall normally slows you down, but if you drop really low below it, then it won't do the slow motion effect. Just a small optimization, but nonetheless. So here I'm going to try for Korra Skip. We, we like don't really have a fully consistent way of doing this. But normally if I do these movements. It can sometimes lead to it happening. Okay, it didn't happen, but that's not a big deal. Oh no, I didn't get the I didn't get the swag jump. All good. And so, throughout the entirety of the run, I'm going to be doing a lot of jumping, and then you do a punch after the rolling of the jump, or before the rolling of the jump. Here, we can do a small skip. Ah, uh, I didn't get it. I won't go for it again. It doesn't save that much time. It would just skip having to run over to this thing. Oh, uh, everybody in chat yell at Milk to fix that then. So here's the first fight. There's not a whole lot to it, but I'm going to basically just try to optimize how many I kill at once. And normally I do this through like ground slams or uh, air throws. And we can press F to throw a special disc. Aw. Uh, I didn't get that quite early enough. Or, I guess too early. And so the bomb disc is one of the biggest radius discs in the game. So we're going to be doing a lot of bomb disc throws to speed up some of the fights. Just because when you throw it, it will hit just absolutely everything. So that fight's done. There's a good amount of fights, but there's also a lot of like really fast ones, so it's okay. So this is just the final part of the tutorial. It's going to have us fight the main villain, Abraxas. Well, I guess he's kind of like a side villain. But you fight him many times, so he's one of the, the more common enemies. I don't know why that third one didn't go through. It's basically just going to kind of teach us different parts of the combat, and you have to do it on him, and then he sends waves of enemies. There's not much to it. But then we'll start to get into the actual level, and it'll be really fun. There will be lots of skips.
So we don't actually have to hit him with these punches that it's telling us to do. The game doesn't really check for that. It only checks that you've actually done the action. Then here we can do a bomb disc to speed up that. For here, there can be some RNG, so let's just hope for the best. When you go to block, there's a chance of him taunting like that. <laughs> uh, he just sometimes doesn't do it. It just wastes a little bit. Not a whole bunch, but it's better for him to just not. <laughs> And then here's just the final part. You have to throw a charge disc at him. But again, it doesn't actually check that you've hit him with it. You just have to throw it. And now we're on to the actual first chapter of the game. And it's just telling us some useless stuff that never gets used in the entirety of the game. Well, I guess the disc stations do, but it's going to... Tell us about the nav a bit. So instead of listening or reading that text box, we can just jump around the side there and it completely skips the game telling you about it. Which is okay, because it's never used anyways. Here we can do a swag throw and hit that button early. And here we can also jump early and we will maintain momentum till we run into the wall. So this is one of the early hard fights in the game, but instead what we can do is we can jump on this thing and we'll go up top and we skip that whole fight. And he's just there for the entirety of the game. And they don't bring him up in the story or anything. So here I'm going to do the first button glitch in the game. When you go to activate a button, it normally plays an animation of you pressing the button, but if you jump just before, it it won't do it. Uh, I can't get that jump, so I'll just do the intended jump. So, I can just jump right into it and press the button again. And normally I would be locked to it, but instead I can just like run away from it and get wherever I need to go. Then I can also do the same glitch by grappling towards enemies. It just completely skips the animation. And it it's not like a huge time save, but it's worth it because you you don't have to like waste time running to the door when you're already at the door, of course. So now we're just gonna make our way to I guess one of the first cutscenes, and this will take us into one of the first fight skips, also known as Bunch of Stuff Skip, because you skip a lot of stuff. So this fight, we're going to run over to this wall. Run against this, jump up, and... Oh, I didn't get it. So, the challenge of this... Is the uh, map is trying to despawn itself, and you cause the game to respawn the rest of the map without the enemies in this room, so you can skip the fight. Here, let me... Oh, dang it, I didn't get it again. So it spawned the next wave. Um, I can just go for it one more time. Okay, there we go. I got it. 
So that just skipped that fight. Assuming I don't die here. Okay, I'm good. So, as I was saying, the f the room attempts to deload itself, and it tries to kill the enemies off to make sure you've done the fight. And if the enemies die, then you also die. But the way we moved the camera when it the map despawned, I kept myself in the air long enough for it to kind of declare that it needs to reload the room. And it allows me to skip the fight. So now we're coming to the next fight skip. This is stack one skip. Just because the name of the room is stack, uh, it's like stack 162 or something. I think, I think we see the name here, maybe. I guess not. So for stack one skip, we just run up here. And we can use this wall conveniently located near the end of the room. And bounce off of it and do a punch and we skip the whole room. Oh. Now the skip doesn't seem like a huge skip, but skips a lot of tutorial dialogue. And we don't want to read any of that. Now it's stack 262 skip. There's again a lot of tutorial text. And instead we can run against that wall and then jump up against another conveniently located wall near the end. And skip the whole grapple section of that room so now we don't know how to jump against a wall for it to grapple us. Or I guess like latch on. It kind of just auto latches on. I went for a throw there, but it's very hard to get to happen. I want to say it's like one frame or even half of a frame to get it to occur. Oh no, I don't have enough energy. Okay. So we're near the end of this level. Just have to... Do a little bit of more parkour over here. And then we will go into the first light cycle part with the Daft Punk music. And again, just punching forward keeps my momentum going forward. And... It's faster to roll than sprint, so that's why I, I jump for the roll and then do a punch. Oh, that was not locked on properly. Why is he not dead? <laughs> so here's the first light cycle. And uh, now, I guess I can mention scripted speed. It's not so much seen in this fight, but or in this light cycle, but it will be seen in later light cycle sections where the game gives you a set amount of speed when certain things happen. And so if I go over a ramp, the game is going to try to ensure that I make it over a ramp by... Usually it will give you a set amount of speed to like gain off of it. So I want to make sure I don't bump into things a lot. And uh, I guess especially I don't want to die because it won't give me that if I respawn from a checkpoint. Which is really dumb because it can cause death loops in some cases. Like here it's going to make sure I make it over this. This is more of just a straightaway, but there will be some later si light cycle sections where it will be more important that I don't run into things and I'll probably run into things. That's the end of chapter one. So chapter two isn't super long. There's a few cool skips. 
But first I have to make my way to the bridge room. And we'll do the ever-amazing bridge skip. That doesn't ever appear all that amazing. And I always hit that station on accident. So this is the bridge room. This is normally like, I guess, a puzzle, but not really. So if we... No, I never get that first try. If we just punch over here, we're on the bridge. Normally the bridge is supposed to despawn and then you have to hit four buttons, but instead we can just jump over to it. I'm glad I got it first try. And there I got a frame perfect jump. And it is actually frame perfect, I'm not lying. And that's just, that's a very small time save, but you don't have to run against the wall that's placed there. Good ego, please leave the bad jokes out of this chat. I don't think there's any actual to or wait, there may be toilets in the game. I don't know. That's a good, good lore point. I don't know that part of the lore. I guess there wouldn't be, unless you consider like, I don't know, maybe the RAM because it gets reset. Everything in the game is usually named after some generic computer thing. Like they'll add an EXE to the end of something. So there very well could be some disposal area. So here's the tank section. I am going to be muting the game for this part because the game does not have any volume control for the sound of the tank. I'll do that right when I get into the tank. Just gonna position myself to be in place for when the tank spawns. Oh, I forgot that's also my Discord hotkey. Oh well, they don't need me anyways. So, there's not a lot with the tank. It's just kind of shooting things to make sure they don't get in my way. There is a small skip where I can jump down to a bridge early. Or jump off of a bridge early. And I'll let you know when that comes up. It's kind of hard to know unless you've done this. But you don't want to hear the tank sound. I can maybe annoy you later with it if you want. And really just shooting the the ships in the sky is just so they don't do as much damage to me. I could, like, just kind of run through, but sometimes they'll just, like, do massive amount. Okay, so right here, I can just go off of this bridge. Normally, the bridge is supposed to explode, but it doesn't. Yeah, you really don't want to hear the tank. Uh, maybe, maybe just a little. Just super loud. I like missed hitting that tank. Uh, that did not kill those guys. That was really weird that my guy would not jump. <laughs> I just have to make my way down the solar sailor shaft. And we're going to get to, I guess it's, I don't want to call them puzzles because the button, there's only like, it's like what other buttons would I press? But there's four buttons in this room, all associated with their own tiny little cut. I'm going to wait for this laser. They all have their like own little small activation cutscene. 
So we get to skip all of that by running just straight into the master line laser. That laser. We're just going to go straight into it. And we'll be fine. So we just spam a special disc at the top of our jump and we skip that room. Okay. Normally you can kill that guy in uh, two discs, but I just got a really bad hit on him. Now, we're in for... Um, I guess it's, it's pretty much the same level. This is Argia. This is kind of like the, the New York City of this world. And we're going to be entering it and then <laughs> escaping it. Spoilers. So there's a lot of parkour going in, but later on there will be just a lot of skips. It is important to kind of just optimize your movement here though, and also optimize any fights you have to do. That's again why I'm doing the, the rolling and then jumping and punching. Just faster. Hey, Powdered Milk, welcome to the stream. Uh, these grapple things are just, like, really dumb. I don't know why they're in the game, but the game will literally just auto-grapple you onto it if you jump toward it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my, my Discord beeps are on, and... I don't know if they... I have Do Not Disturb on my Windows, but uh, I don't think Discord beeps work with Do Not Disturb mode. Oh, so, sorry. So here's, this is just kind of a forced grapple spot. Um, we'll see some more of these later. And there's some weird things that you can do now with them that I found right before the stream. So I'll go for that later, but that's much further in the run. And again, with more grapple thingies that just auto grapple onto them. That was a close one. He almost hit me with the disc and I could have fallen off. Why did... That is super weird for that guy to not die there. So, I have to be careful with this room because if I go too fast, then the room will soft block the game. Oh, we're good. We didn't soft lock there. If I run off this wall, then I should get the perfect cycle on these lasers. I don't know why running off that wall always gets you the perfect cycle, but it just always does 100% of the time. And then I just hit that guy a few times to make sure he falls off and doesn't hit me while I'm trying to run on these. Oh god, there's some person outside of my apartment with speakers on. Well, 
Well, either way, if you guys can hear it, you'll get some sick jams. You don't understand how sick these jams are. I'm kind of bad there. I should have had enough energy to kill that guy. All right, good. You can't hear the sick jams. These lasers can just be awful sometimes, so I might just kind of wait it out a little bit. Oh, I can go on that. That was a close one. I almost got hit in the foot, and sometimes those lasers can one-shot you if you get hit in the foot. But I also have to be careful with this fight, because you can also soft block in this fight, where an enemy will spawn invisible. I th think he might have. I can't tell. Um, it will- we'll see if- when I kill this guy, if the room... No, nope, I have to redo the room. One of the enemies never spawned. Uh, that was weird. Okay, he spawned. Oh, wrong door. So this is the final fight of this part of the chapter. And I, then I guess that's kind of like the second half of Argeon that we're going into. And we have plenty of energy to grab here, so it's no worries if we use a bunch of it. And this is a little bit on a timer, so... Just waiting for the next ship because of how quickly I kill the enemies. So I get really close to those ones, that way I can grab the energy things off of him. With that guy, just do one slow motion disc on him, and then a heavy disc, like the sprint attack, and he does a spiral, and it throws multiple discs. I did that on an enemy earlier, but it's usually just the fastest way to kill that type of enemy. Now we're going in the second half of Arshia. So, this little portion right now, I can't run. I can't run until I get on this certain material, because the game just removes all sprinting permissions. But right when I land on this bit of ground, right here, I can run. And I'm going to run off to the side here. And what this will do is, when I jump over this wall, the enemy pathing has not spawned yet. So what I can do is I can just kill them <laughs> they'll they'll never move they won't move even if you start hitting them so it's worth doing because they won't run from you or any shenanigans
So we'll start to do the glitch fest right after this room. There is a glitch, or I guess a sequence break that you can do here, but. Yeah, no, I didn't get it. There's a way to do that grapple tactic and then also get up to that platform and you skip doing this if you can get up there. But it's really hard to do and it hasn't really been all that consistent. Oh, I landed on this early, so I had to kind of jump back onto it to get the grapple point loaded. So I can do an infinite wall jump between these two walls. Uh, it just basically means you can jump back and forth between walls endlessly. <laughs> as long as two walls are parallel to each other. And close enough, you can always just keep jumping back and forth. And we will actually be doing that for a skip here in a minute. So... Up next is an Out of Bounds. Uh, I don't really even know what my name is for it that I, I made, but with this skip, we're going to be going to the side of this building, and there's an invisible floor right up against this wall. And then we're going to jump around and do a jump between these two walls. And we're going to do it till we reach the top of the building. Oh, that is not good. <laughs> I got a really bad placement on that wall, I think. Normally, you'd be much closer to the walls, but at the end of that, I wasn't. So I wasn't actually inside of one of the walls. So I'll, I'll go for it again. Better to go out of bounds than not out of bounds. I don't think I got it. Yeah, no. I'll just do the fight. I don't know why I'm getting this uh, really weird placement on it. Rip OOB. Or should I go for it again? I don't know. It's really cool if I get it. I'll, I'll go for it a third time, and if I don't get it this time, I'll just do the fight. It really sucks if you don't get to see it, because it looks really cool once you're out of it. I think I'm screwed on this. I could be wrong. Where? What? <laughs> uh, I've never had that happen. I don't know where I was. I'm just gonna do the fight. I have never had any issues like this before. Pretty much. Pretty much marathon life. Luckily this fight isn't... I've definitely spent way more time than it takes to do this fight. You don't actually have to run all the way up to that thing, so I just kind of hit the ledge of it and... It sucks I didn't get to do the OOB, but there will be some cool skips coming up as well. You'll still be able to see. Oh, there's another skip right here. 
this is called straight to the tank skip. And okay, we're safe. Now we're out of the map. We can skip right to the tank. And so we have to run between those walls to hit a trigger that has us run on that wall and into the tank section. Oh, damn, there's one more enemy. There's there's another one. Uh, Doing that out of bounds would have saved time if I got it first try. Although after first try, it's not actually worth the time save. I just wanted to do it because it, it looks really cool. Here's just a, shooting a bunch of ships out of the sky. bad shot okay so now we're doing the next light cycle section which is absolutely the worst one so I'm probably not gonna be able to read chat during this I'll try to commentate it the best I can though I mean there's not like a lot to actually doing the light cycle there's not a lot of tricks going into them that's kind of one thing we really want to find with this run is a way to kind of improve the light cycle sections or maybe break them a bit and as I mentioned a bit earlier in the run there is scripted speed given so if I get that speed and then say I were to die I also would lose the speed that the game gave me, and I would have to kind of go solely off of the acceleration of my cycle. And there's actually certain cases where it can cause you to just die over and over because you, you know, you checkpoint right where it has boulders falling and you can't speed up fast enough. So right there, it just boosted me, and you hear a little bit of a sound cue with it. And so that's the scripted speed I'm referring to. Is it will just kind of randomly boost you to make sure you have enough speed going into it. Oh, what? What did I just land on? I think I just hit a lamp post. Rip. <laughs> that is, if that isn't marathon luck, I don't know what it is. Yep. Okay, I got very lucky with that jump over that ramp. I just got disconnected from Windows Live. <laughs> right. Maybe it's actually dead now. Maybe they killed it right as my run goes. I hope that doesn't mean I lose all my, my save. I'm hitting everything right now. Absolutely everything. Literally everything. <laughs> and hitting some of this stuff, like, I can't really do a lot about because I don't have that scripted speed, so I'm not going past it. I'm just getting hit directly by it. Like, my guy isn't really speeding up anymore. I don't think I actually can. Like, world record is actually going to be unbeatable because Windows Live is going to go down and you're never going to be able to run the game because of the Windows Live DRM check.
Thanks for the luck. So now we're about to enter the game grid. This is uh, kind of like what is... Uh, oh. Wait, what? Oh, did I jump? Wait, I'm confused. The enemies did not spawn. Okay, they spawned this time. <laughs> What is this run? Nope. Hello. It's not hitting the right guy. So... I was trying to hit that button while that guy was killed and it panned out, but I didn't quite hit it. I don't think I was quite close enough to it. That was probably the issue. Uh, I usually run around that side just for safety. Sometimes I have issues with this side when I try to throw the disc. I don't actually have to fight these guys. It will let me lock. Oh no 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 no! Okay, this this run is like cursed now. It wouldn't let me lock on to that, and uh. I don't know, sometimes the game can be super weird about those grapple points and it will just not load their their targeting. And there's no way to manually target onto something and I guess just the direction was awful. Let's round two. It really sucks that it makes you press all the buttons again if you die. It doesn't checkpoint you on any of the buttons. Uh, I'm going to kill this guy for safety. It really doesn't want me to grapple onto this. Okay. We're good. So let's hope they play nice with me because this is only grapples. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Now just like the rest of the run's grapple points are just cursed. So now we're about to enter the game grid. This is kind of like what you would normally be familiar with in Tron where they're like put into a, an arena where they have to battle to the death. So this is like the modern version of it. We're talking to Gibson, he wants us, he wants to break out. And there's no way to really speed this up much. It's just doing the fights as fast as you can, but even if you do the fights as fast as possible, there's still points where he's talking in the background. So, if you want to go grab a snack or something, now's a good part to do it. You won't miss any skips or anything. Oh. <laughs> and so, you know, you just you stand here and do cool tricks. And these also refill most of your energy, so it's it's really nice that you can just kind of jump against them and you won't have to worry about having too little energy for the next fights.
So here it's just bomb discs because it will be guaranteed to kill both enemies. So this should be the final fight, I think. Oh wait, I think there's think there's one more. Maybe. No. No, there's not. There we go. So uh, Gibson's gonna land a ship on the, the one ugly looking dude. And then we are now at the colonel. Um, I, I haven't actually watched the cutscenes in a while. I believe the main enemy is trying to... He wants to infect the colonel. So, we're like, oh, well, we go to the colonel. That's probably where he's going to be. Because, you know, I'm, I'm a system monitor. So, that's why we're here. I can do a cool trick here where I bounce a disc off of the wall there. And it will hit that button early. But the thing about hitting that button early is the floor doesn't load in this room. So we jump in here and hit the checkpoint and then just reload it quickly. And then we can also skip killing this guy by jumping against this and back. And we'll be over here. Oh, that that's not what we want. So this button doesn't look like we can activate it, but it actually is just loaded all the time. So even though we didn't kill any of the enemies in there, we can still press it. And here we don't actually have to use those grapple things. We can just jump down and throw it. So this is dreaded basement fight skip for Colonel. Uh, it's just a really long fight where we just blow up a lot of things. Uh, so that's that's all I'm really gonna be doing is just blowing up a bunch of things Oh uh, The targeting system in this game is a bit weird because it's kind of just based on where you're looking and You know if there's multiple enemies in your view it doesn't have any priorities on who to hit it just will kind of randomly go places. So these are the first enemies where I have to use slow-mo disc, or actually need to use slow-mo disc. You can't kill them unless you use slow-mo disc. That was weird. I was just kind of running against an invisible edge. I don't actually have any explanation for that. I think we should be near the end of this fight. Maybe. No, there might be one more wave. Oh, that did not hit the right guy. That's what I mean by the targeting system just doesn't know what it wants to do. I should have definitely hit that guy, but I didn't. I'm gonna try to hit that enemy from across the room. Okay, and then... Right there, we can blow up the wall mid cutscene. Or. I don't even know what those are called. There has to be a name for something that's not a cutscene, but that's like a forced camera angle. So we had to kill those guys to open this door. And there's, there's a few other rooms where you have to kill enemies to get the door open. It's usually not too bad, though. So we're just kind of making our way up to the colonel. This whole, like, bit of, like, rocky area is just... It's like a tower to the, the colonel.
you can actually see like the the things that go into it but oh okay that was bad that was just unlucky with the cycling on those platforms so there's it you know this is the f5 deck just because we're in a computer and f5 is computer things i just think that's funny that they just threw random names in there So this this fight is kind of similar to the last one, just blowing up a lot of things and trying to maximize their radius that we hit them with the bomb disc. Oh. And then usually if I can tell that that's like the last enemy, then I can try to get closer to the end of the room. Uh, okay, there's the other enemy. Oh, another one spawned. Oh, there's one over there. There we go. I got kind of confused because normally that guy only runs over there when there's no enemies, but I guess one of them can run. Without there being any enemies. So luckily, we don't have to do the same thing again. Because this is the K deck, and we can skip half of the K deck. So, to skip this side of the room, we just jump over here, and we skipped it. We still have to kill the enemies over here to get that button to activate, because they only activate upon that button being hit. Oh, I was hoping that would kill all of them. Okay, yeah. I thought that was going to happen. There's sometimes where there's an upgrade that prevents you from taking damage from that, but sometimes it just doesn't activate. Here, I'm, I'm going to wait for the wall. You're normally supposed to wait for the wall, but as I mentioned, there's an upgrade that has a chance of not taking damage from that. But sometimes it just doesn't activate. So, you get fucked like that, but... And this is awful wall. It just... It's kind of... Ah, oh, damn. That was completely my fault. Uh, normally, you get screwed over by the wall just despawning when you go to jump towards it. I'm gonna wait for it. You're also forced into this really weird camera angle. Now I'm just throwing, so, uh, I'm just throwing now. I was holding sprint there and it, it ran. So expect bronze this season. Okay, we're good now. I think I should still be underestimate, even though I, I screwed up at every possible part. It was more like a rage restart, because there's no point in getting the death screen. So this room, it's kind of similar to that other one I was in earlier, but... You have to activate in the pattern above the door. So 
Well, there's no point in me, like, killing these guys early, because it's just going to spawn more people, and I have to kill the amount that gets spawned anyways, so that's why I don't really bother with them. Until after. I don't know why those enemies aren't walking, though. Really glitchy. Oh. Hello? Die, please. Thank you. So now we're... We're gonna get here, and we're gonna get chased by a Braxis, who we saw in the tutorial earlier. Hey, Good Eagle, maybe I'll get the new skip that I found earlier. And I won't hit estimate. Okay, so here it just wants you to activate the buttons and then... I don't really know the... I don't understand the story behind this, but we're gonna blow up the energy reactor in here. I guess so he can't use it. Or his, his power. And it says shut down, but it like explodes. So... And I don't know why they would put a button up here. It just seems really inconvenient. Like you really need to shut down the reactor. Oh, there's a button all the way up here. Like watch, it just... It's gonna blow up. Yeah, see, it blows up. That doesn't look like it's shutting down. Oh, I knocked that dude off. That was sick. Okay, so now we're going to the next light cycle part. We get to use Flynn's light cycle. He's the creator. We get to use his light cycle, which goes a little bit faster. There's also a lot worse traps here. Oh. That was a weird, like, lag spike. I think that just comes from the loading. Sometimes that happens. Uh, I don't know if it depends like what way you go, because you can kind of turn around a little bit and go more to the left. Nope. Hitting invisible walls here. And this one doesn't have, like, any enemies that are gonna ride up next to me. It's really just the, the fucking rocks. The rocks are always the biggest enemy in these sections. It is actually a little bit easier to do these light cycle portions on a controller, but I'm never going to use a controller for this game, so they will never be easier. And so, 
Gibson has a couple of cycles. His first cycle, which he, his first cycle actually happens multiple times, but I guess it's his first phase. And his first phase, he's just going to be like, oh, hit me. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, that one guy from that horror movie. And then the next few, he's going to spawn a few waves of enemies, and I'll just kill the enemies and then uh, blow up a thing on the wall. And I just like hold sprint here and he won't do any damage to me. Oh, Even though I jumped up there, it's going to spawn me back down on the ground anyways. So he's going to like infect those things on the wall. And then he's going to run to the next one, and then I, I break that one, and he spawns enemies. Oh, that was a bad move. So these ones infect you when you hit them. So it really sucks if you don't kill all of them in one hit, basically. Yeah, always spread the pain like you spread the butter. Uh, so I'm going to get on the ground here. Uh, the reason why is because a bomb uh, slam can... It can reach the bottom. Or it can reach the top, but it can't reach the bottom. And if you're standing up top, it can't reach the bottom. And so that uh, that final phase was literally just ground slam him twice, and it kills him. And luckily we didn't soft lock there, because there is a chance of soft locking right when he dies. And then we would have to... I don't know, sometimes you have to redo the fight, other times it just does the cutscene again. It's really weird when it does happen. Uh, so this part is just a lot of parkour to get out of these ruins, and then we will be heading back to Argia because it is currently being blown up. I don't know if there's actually a cutscene that tells you that, uh, but it's being blown up. Actually, I don't think there is a cutscene that tells you that. I don't think you find out till you actually... Wait, what? I don't know what happened there. I I jumped against the thing and I died somehow. I don't know if Good Ego saw that. Good Ego is currently the world record holder of this game. You see him in the chat. Uh let's uh hope that doesn't happen? Okay, I guess we're good. So these guys we can just run past. Yeah, I don't know. I've never had that happen. Marathon luck right there. So here, I'm going to try my best to not actually do this fight. 
Because these guys can be really annoying. Like that, where they just kind of disc you from across the map. Like a... Like a Call of Duty montage when they throw a disc. And then we just run to the end of the room. But we don't actually have to run over to those guys. We can just kill them from here. Which seems to be better sometimes. Because sometimes they'll like run around if you get too close to them. This is uh, second to last uh, light cycle section of the game. The other one's very short, so this is like the last longer one. This is the last time we'll use Flynn's bike. We just kind of stole and I don't think ever seen again. You just ditch it. And again, the biggest enemy is just the terrain. There's no enemies here. And then the top right is, is the health bar for Argia. But um, there's no way to, like, stop it from going down. And it pretty much is just always supposed to be really low by the time you get to the end of this light cycle portion. Oh. If you even get, like, remotely close to those rocks, you just get destroyed. I'm lucky I didn't die from that. And uh, again, controller can kind of be a little bit better. Sometimes with the turning, it's just immediate with the light cycle, so it can screw you over a bit. Especially if you're around, like, rounded corners like that. It's hard to do, like, a rounded turn. Also, I believe if you restart from checkpoint, the health bar stays in the same spot, which is really weird. You would think they would want to, like, put the health up. Yeah, here's, uh, we just, just ditched the bike. This is the second to last chapter. We're almost reaching the final one. The RG is now completely destroyed. Although we have seen none of this area. I guess just because the city's so big. Which is really weird because like we still end up in the same... Oh, that is not the right disc. We end up in the same spot that uh, like the queen was at. It's probably hard to remember seeing the queen. I'm going to mute the game again. And uh, this tank part, there's still not really much going on. Just shooting a bunch of shit. Uh, there is kind of a small strat here. We we hit those buttons early. Those buttons are all set, but there's one more button around the other side. 
But if we hit all of those buttons early and just don't destroy both of the tanks, then we actually skip a wave of tanks coming. Normally they send in reinforcements. But instead we can just hit all four buttons and that stops them from sending reinforcements. And um, there's other paths here, but they're all dead ends, so I don't know why they made the level like that. I mean, I don't think they should have added other paths at all, because the tank is very clunky to move, and the road isn't, like, super big. It's not, like, easy to make a U-turn. But they did put extra paths in case you wanted to uh, explore, I guess. You can't get out of the tank, either. So we're reaching the end of the tank. This is the last tank that we have to do, thankfully. They were supposed to be really exciting, but they're just kind of boring. I did remember to unmute. I That was one thing I finally remembered to do. Booyah. So, now I'm finally gonna do a fight against Abraxas. So... Here he's gonna do this slam. And... We actually just one-cycled him. They expect him to do multiple slams. But... Because you do so much damage with your ground slam on your heavy disc, because it hits multiple times, we're able to skip that. And so now there's some falling debris. So if we get him under it, we can actually kill him pretty darn fast. So even though he's not getting hit by a rock... Uh, I'm just- I'm, I'm gonna try to kill him with my fists. Like a man. Oh! Shit. I really wanna- I really wanna- there we go. I, I beat the shit out of him. Okay, so... We are now entering the final chapter. This is called End of the Line. Uh, right now we're kind of back in like a ruin section. The the creator of the system, Flim, he uh, I guess found us just kind of knocked out. And he gave us... Hey Jamaican, let me know when time okay. is. we Will do. We still got a little bit here. Okay, I just didn't want to miss it. Uh, yeah, it will, it will be pretty obvious once I'm in the final boss fight, because it looks like a boss fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, right here, we're going to attempt ship, skip, skip, skip. So, what you can do is, if I get it correctly, land on that, and jump right up, and we skip that ship over there and skip doing that fight. And yeah, we get a uh, ship, skip, skip, skip. And so we're now going to leave the Outlands and we're basically heading to like the mother ship. Uh, it's not really a ship, it's just kind of the whole like assembly line of just stuff that builds the... Well, he scared me because he told me to go in there and then 
they were like in a battle scene, so I didn't know if he was like. <laughs> no, no, I still have a little bit to go. Oh, sorry, dude. Milk moving back in here. <laughs> Did you split? No, no, okay. we're still going. Okay, we're good. Uh, I can. I'll. I'll just say when I'm on the final boss fight. That way you're prepared. There should be a no, no. Bar. I, I, I know. Yeah. We're good, dude. So I'm sorry. Here. I'm. I'm fairly new to the hosting thing. So. Sweet. That was I'll a brand new skip I just found. So that skip allows you to skip that entire fight, and I found it an hour before this. What you do is I. I. It was kind of hard to explain while I was doing it, but. It allows you to grapple onto the enemies. And you kind of grapple towards them. So the fight's actually still going on. So every time I kill a set of enemies, it thinks I've killed the set of enemies over there. So it's still showing the fight happening over there. Which is kind of funny, but... I'm actually really happy I got that skip. It's very like tricky to get and I got the perfect luck with it because there is a little bit of RNG to it because of how the enemies act and I, I can't I can't hit the button hello okay and now we can go up to the assembly line Yeah, this game's always insane in marathons just because you you never get anything that you always get in runs, but you get all the skips that you're not supposed to get in marathons. I did say I was going to go for that though, so I'm I'm very happy I at least got that. Okay, I wanted to let that guy throw his disc just to make sure I didn't die. So this is, like, literally just where they make all their ships and put bombs on them. I don't know what else this is supposed to be for. Like, there's, there's a cooling system that we, we kind of skip, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't know fully. It, he just has an evil layer that makes ships with bombs on them. So awesome skip time. This is the end of the line skip right here is, um, the skip is running. A, oh, if I can get it, it's running against this. Hello? <laughs> Never mind. We're not doing it. <laughs> They're not having it today, just not wanting me to run the proper way. So all you have to do is run against the wall, right? And you skip uh, three fights. Hello. <laughs> okay, so you run against this, and now we are out of bounds. And then we can run around this. So I'm going to try to be super safe here because sometimes these bomb things can speed up and hit you. I'm going to wait here. I'll wait for another one. Okay. Now we can go. I'm going to jump and punch. And land at the bottom. And we hit the final light, si light cycle section. And this section is really awful because sometimes you can get too close to the wall and just slam right into it. Like this. Okay, I'm good. Oh, hopefully. Hopefully. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, that's a pretty sick skip. Um, you... There's just no solid wall there, so... 
you can just go like right through down to the light cycle section and Uh, they j they both jumped off. Thanks for the luck. Uh, oh wait. Oh, I don't I don't have the energy. I'm not paying attention. There we go. Okay, we're now on the final boss fight. Uh, I will make sure to mention when there's time. So this boss fight, he's going to you try to take energy from these four siphons. And then he's going to try to take it from the main one. So we have to blow it up. And then there's going to be these two buttons that cause a surge of power from the middle one. Actually, on these first two siphons, I'm going to be doing a, a death trick. Where you literally just kill yourself. And here, let me get this... Properly, so I'm just gonna button glitch to be able to get over here quick enough. So we're gonna let it do its energy surge, and since he's standing on the stairs right now, I'm just gonna jump off. And he is now over there. And so I can immediately go to hit the next one. And we can do the same thing on the second one. He's over there. I jump off. Uh, actually, I don't think he moved. I think he was a little bit closer. It takes him forever to, to get over. Because he actually jumps into the middle and then moves. So it doesn't save time to do the death on these last two. There's no chance of it saving time. It takes him forever to walk over to this one, so that's why I don't do the death, because it just takes him even longer. I don't know if I got that one. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to hit that one again. There we go. Now he's gonna try to siphon from the middle one, and he's like, No, Brax, says, don't do it. You're gonna. Gonna over overload it and stuff. All right, time's coming up. I'll let you know when. All right. So we can't hit it until all four beams are being siphoned from. And then it will let us target it. Time. Nice. What was the time? It was probably really bad. 124.44. Oh, God. <laughs> Still underestimate. <laughs> so. First try. Very nice, dude. Yeah, I, I'm glad I got the new YOLO skip, but definitely could have done better. Uh, do you want me to just let this play out, or...? Um, yeah, we'll probably transition here in just a sec. I'll just, I'll let this play out for now then. Okay. Thanks for the run, man. Yeah, I enjoyed it still. A lot of uh, bad things happened, a lot of good things happened. Oh god, fire trucks. <laughs> <laughs> The run's literally on fire.
And uh, F's for Anon, because he's dead. We can get some F's in the chat. <laughs> 